So my name is Duro Oye and I'm a UK fellow from 2020. I run an organisation called 2020 Change, which is a youth empowerment organisation that works with young people from underrepresented ethnic groups, low socioeconomic backgrounds, helping them develop soft and hard skills that enables them to secure sustainable employment within the corporate world. I think sometimes we don't even know anymore in this interdependent world what is a hard skill and what is a soft skill. How do you, how do you think of those skills? Well, so for me, I determine soft skills as the things that you pick up as a way of growing up. So communication, you know, critical thinking, um, the ability to, to break down a situation and make it your own and learn from examples or situations or hardship that you've had in the past and come out a stronger person, so resilience. Um, and a lot of the young people that we work with don't come from a strong nuclear family. So a lot of those skills aren't taught to them at home. You know, there's that old saying, it takes a village to raise a child. The communities of today aren't the communities of old, so people aren't looking out for their fellow neighbor mm. as they used to. So that's not getting taught, you know, within the community. And a lot of our young people get caught short, so they need us to help them develop those skills. And that's what we do. Hard skills are the ones that you kind of get taught in school, you know, the formal kind of education and all of those kinds of technical skills. But I believe the future and where we're heading, those soft skills are going to become a lot more prominent and we need to place a huge emphasis on that. God bless you for saying that because I would love to have a whole conversation with you on hard skills, soft skills, because I agree with you. Let's do it. I think that um, in an interdependent world where we absolutely have to find better ways to know each other across lines of difference, have hard conversations, do the critical thinking in so, during so much uncertainty, that the what we used to consider the hard skills are actually the easier skills. Sure. That the new hard skills are listening, deep listening, yes. are the kind of critical thinking you're talking about, and and truly using a part of your connect your identity to connect. I think that people who've seen themselves as outsiders have an advantage in this world. Absolutely. And how do we tap into that? Sometimes we think about dignity as like something you earn. Mm. You work with kids who may have been told in their lives they're not worth very much. How do you think about their dignity? I mean, I, I, think, I think about their dignity all the time and that's what keeps me going. It's about helping a young person identify who they are. You know, taking that introspective look and figuring out what's on the inside and how we can bring that out. And for them to take pride in that. A lot of the young people that come to us are dejected, rejected, you know, they've been, doors have been shut in their faces mm. several times over. So their confidence mm. is way down, self-esteem is way down. We need to help build them back up. So we help them look deep within for the good that we know is in there and we bring it out. And we, all we do as an organization is hold up a mirror and say, this is you, the version of you that we see. Now you need to see that version of you and hold that mirror up for everybody else to see. I love that. You know, that's Acumen's definition of accompaniment, that you, it's to walk side by side, to hold a mirror, mm. and to help you see yourself, but sometimes better Absolutely. than you might see your own self. Um, and so I love that that is something that you integrate. Yeah. Do you have any moments or memories um, or stories of where you've seen like that light, that dignity of someone, um, and have been able to call it out for them. Absolutely. Um, so a number of the young people that we work with have had challenging pasts, um, challenging starts to life, and as a result have kind of gone down the wrong path and done some of the things, wrong things that they shouldn't have done. But we help them flip that on its head because a lot of these young people, one person that comes to mind in particular, has exceptional skills, communication skills, he has, he's a top salesman in the field that he was in previously. <laughs> <laughs> so we helped him find dignity in what he was doing, but now flipped it in a positive way. So now he's, you know, into tech sales as opposed to selling what he was doing on the streets. And him being able to find dignity in the fact that he's actually really, really good at sales. So the way you help find dignity in the illicit is to say, there's something you do 
really, well. really well build it, yeah. babe. But build it in a way that it's fabulous and vibe with the sun. And will make you proud. Yeah. And you won't have to keep looking over your shoulder. You won't have to worry about people coming after you, police coming after you. And you can actually build a sustainable life for you and your family. That's a great story. So I imagine these young people give you a lot of hope, but they also at times make you feel despair. Mm -hmm. What gives you a sense of despair right now, but what, how do you counter it with hope? How do you, especially given that you are in a world where change is resisted, you are working with young people who feel left completely out of the system. Um, what, 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 feeds that despair, unfortunately. How do you count it with hope? I think, I mean, right now, we'll definitely be the cost of living crisis. That's like a key thing, and that's <laughs> giving me that despair at the moment. And the hope that we're doing what we're doing to help create a better future for the young people that we serve, that gives me hope for the future. And the fact that we have amazing people supporting us, backing us, empowering us to keep doing the work that fuels me with hope for the future meeting new people that have amazing hearts generous hearts that just want to do good um, growing up in the same communities as the young people that we currently serve I'll be honest I didn't know that that many people existed in the world but now that I'm on this side of, of the fence meeting those individuals it, it, it fills my heart with a lot of hope knowing that there are people that deeply care about the issues of the world mm. and are doing something meaningful to make a difference to those that might not ever be able to say thank you, you know. Um, and that for me is, is my driving force that helps me know that we're not going to stop until we see the change that we want to affect. I love that, to see that there's actually goodness out there.